segment, we are joined this morning by the Dean of Faculty of Arts from Galen University. Um, and she's accompanied by two of her best students. <laughs> uh, we have with us Viandra Betancourt and we have Jessica Perez. Hi. Good morning, guys. Good morning. And you're here to talk to us about anthropology. Yeah. Yeah. What is anthropology? Let's start from the easiest. I think that's, yeah, the biggest question. <laughs> um, <laughs> what is it? Um, and I struggle with this too when I go around and talking to students or when we have um, Kobeck, um, yeah. you know, or uh, we go uh, marketing. What is anthropology? Anthropology is the study of us, the study of everything that makes us us. Um, everything from clothing, the foods we eat, how we eat it, how we communicate. And so I was listening to the So you loved our prior. first conversation. Yeah, so the first <laughs> conversation was fantastic because then she was talking about, yeah, there were so many different <laughs> aspects of it. Um, how do we express ourselves? How we dress, why we dress the way we do, um, how we communicate, how we don't communicate about certain issues, um, our belief systems and how firm we are with those belief systems. How culture changes over time as well is, is important to understand. And in Belize, where we're so culturally diverse, it's important for us to recognize and understand our differences and embrace them. Then we can respect each other. Um, we should be able to then better get along when we understand where each other is coming from, as opposed to having our own worldview. This is right. This is how it's supposed to be done and shut everything out. So anthropology is basically the study of culture. And human behavior. Yep, and, and human, human behavior. behavior, yeah. But it, is it more, I'm trying to differentiate it from psychology or sociology and to yeah. find out what is the niche. So culture is the really big emphasis that we have, but we're also really holistic. So we do look at the psychological aspects, we look at the social aspects. Um, I talk a lot about in my classes the biocultural perspective that we have. I'm more of a bio side of anthropology, which is another aspect. Mm -hmm. So I like studying human skeletons, um, usually skeleton rema skeletal remains from an archaeological context. But then understanding our biological differences. So how do we differ from each other biologically? What is our variations, our adaptations? Everything from skin color differences to why we can live at, some can live at high altitudes. Um, and then those of us who maybe want to go and climb Mount Everest <laughs> couldn't get there just because of our body's reactions against the high altitude. So. You have to have some fascinating class discussions <laughs> in a context <laughs> like <laughs> Belize. I'm, I'm trying to imagine it. Let, let's get the students as, uh, as to why you chose this particular field. Um, well, for the beginning of my junior college years, I didn't actually know about anthropology. So it was until the second year that I wanted to study anthropology. So um, I decided to go to Galen. and. Anthropology is so different from business and um, tourism and all the other common um, uh, studies, area studies that they're doing. Mm -hmm. So that's why I chose anthropology. Mm -hmm. Well, my experience is a bit different. I was actually supposed to do accounting because mm. I did that's accounting. That's a big jump. <laughs> yes, I did accounting <laughs> in high school. And when I went to Galen, I saw accounting. And then at the bottom of that, it says anthropology. So I was like, hmm. Accounting or anthropology? <laughs> anthropology <laughs> is. Yeah. And I've grown to really love it. Um, I find that it's a privilege to get to learn about people and their cultures. And you don't necessarily have to accept what they believe or what they do, but you get to respect and you get to have a better understanding of other people and what they're going through. And it helps you to be a better person. You get to be very humble after so much research and everything. And yeah. I love it. <laughs> Sherry, what's been the uptake uh, since Galen has introduced this uh, course, this so program? We've actually had this program for quite, quite a long a time. It was one of the first programs that we had. Um, we actually had an anthropology program and an archaeology program. The two were separate. We made a decision, myself, uh, Dr. Morris, who's the director for the Institute of Archaeology now, and Dr. Jaime Awe, who used to be the director, and he was influential in bringing the programs in we made a decision to bring them in together because anthropology is this greater umbrella. So within anthropology, you have archaeology, which I think maybe in Belize more people are more aware of archaeology. Yeah. Um, and then linguistics, biological anthropology, and cultural. So we've had this program for quite some time. Um, 
And we've seen it up and down, but we're really trying to, to push to get more students to come into it because we're sort of seeing the there's a real need when we look at the type of development that's happening within the country, when we look at the problems that we're having um, in terms of the violence, um, but even everything from the sexual abuse to yeah. just the issues with the ICJ and how we're starting to get polarized. Yeah. What is it that we need to do to bring us to bring us together? What would you say the purpose is of looking at something from an anthropology perspective? I think it's being holistic, um, understanding those little subtle nuances, everything from how we're communicating, how your belief system is influencing decision making. So I think there's a lot of different things that we might not see at the surface. But once you can dig a little bit deeper to really understand what makes a community or a culture really tick, like I said, not being so obvious, but understanding that can then, I think, bring a conversation a lot further and bring more people in. Um, maybe get people to, not so much maybe accept, but to understand why decisions are being made and how maybe we can all work together to come up with better decisions? One of the experiences that we've had in the country is with a Jamaican anthropologist who yeah, came in. Yeah, I wanted to mention him, yeah, because yeah, I think Gale. he's coming back on Friday. Yeah. Um, and I, I always look at it and I always wonder what niche areas, because he came in and specifically did with urban violence yep. and male underparticipation. But I always wonder what some of the other hot, relevant topics are, and maybe Maybe some of the millennials here can uh, point to areas that you would think that, man, we really need to explore that more. Maybe there are areas that are not necessarily popular, mm -hmm. but you think that if we were to spend some time looking at this from an anthropological standpoint, that that would really push us further from where we are developmentally. I believe mental illness mm -hmm. is a very big thing that um, I think a lot of Belizeans take for granted, that we don't take it very seriously, and it's actually a very serious thing. You find that a lot of teenagers that, you know, they transition from high school to university, they're put in this position where they come like from, they're very childish and now they have to be an adult. And then they're put in this position where they can't adapt to it and a lot of times teachers expect a certain maturity from them and then they don't have it. They don't know where to stand. And then what happens is they have a lot of work that's on top of that and then they have their parents that are pushing them to do better, and then they have peer pressure, and it's just a whole mental illness that they have. Interesting. Wow. Yeah, well, to me, it would be the development of technology. I mean, there's so much things going on now that in the past there wasn't. I'm waiting I mean. for that paper from you, man. <laughs> <laughs> I'm waiting. Yeah. So um, right now, the problem about the sexual harassment and all of that that happened yeah. just recently, and um, how it has been easier to spread it around and how um, it has made cyberbullying easier as well. Yeah. So that would be. Oh, oh, oh. I, wanna, I, wanna, I wanna ask one, one question. I thought you, one of you were, are you both, where are you from, Kayo? Yeah, Kayo. I am from Orange Walk. Orange Walk, mm -hmm. okay. Because I thought one of you were gonna, uh, you were gonna say crime. And, and I wanna ask because you have a great criminal justice program mm -hmm. as well. We've had Kendra on the show yep. many times, and she has such an amazing perspective on the, cr uh, the crime situation. How much do you work along with other departments like criminal justice? Because what you can bring as anthropologists in terms of understanding the whys, yep. I, I can imagine how, how much more richer the conversation can be about criminal justice. Um, Vian Viandra's doing a minor in criminal justice. No, no, no. Oh, no. sorry, <laughs> sorry. I know that's what I love to do. Yeah, yeah. Um, one of the things, so, um, yeah, Kendra and I talk really closely and we developed, um, developing that criminal justice program, I wanted cultural anthropology to be a requirement for that program. Nice. Um, and the ideas of um, maybe coming from my perspective. So we have a course called Gangs, Gains, and Violence, which is coming out of Dr. Gale's report. Um, and that's a textbook, actually, in a couple of the classes that's required for students to read. And so we've incorporated that in. Um, but within the anthropology program, students can minor in anything. And I think criminal justice is a fantastic 
match. A match for it. But then also for the other programs, and I'm trying to get anthropology being brought in, even to the business area. Business anthropology is becoming huge right now. Yeah. Um, economic anthropology is a class that we yeah. offer. So if we can get it into those other programs, um, I think that can really really help because, in the because that could be the bedrock for marketing because understanding yep. how people buy yep. why they buy that's it. another really yep. great we've had a couple students where you know i don't want to a minor but if you do marketing then you can just market yourself yep. right but then understanding if you're getting into a company how do i tap into these other communities and these other cultures so you know we're going to market our product just to this group but maybe our marketing techniques aren't going to work for this other group and what is it going to take for us to yeah. to get it over there Wow. But then environmental science, that's what Viandra yeah. is in too. Yeah, because that, one of the things that is obvious that, that's triggered in my brain is how it impacts behavior change. So mm -hmm. if you understand the source of a behavior, you're better equipped to plan interventions, whether environmental, whether education on technology, whether criminal just, uh, crime, crime and violence, um, you, you have a better understanding. Uh, Sherry, you know, We've, we've spoken, especially about the crime situation with the police department quite a bit, and or only references Dr. Gale's report. My question is, has there been any effort from Gale inside to produce newer research on some of the issues that we're seeing, if it's crime or any other issue that we seem to be faced with? Yeah, it's a really, really good question, and it's something that I would like to see us do. Um, we haven't really been able to do anything right yet. Um, our situation, Galen being so small, it's Kendra at the criminal justice program, me in the anthropology program, um, and trying to do everything in addition to wanting to do research. Um, and so really hoping that students then will pick this up. And so the classes that they have, um, their research paper, those are opportunities for them to get out there and, and to do this kind of work. Um, we'd like to eventually offer a master's in social science um, and we would like the we like anthropology to be sort of the main theme for it uh, and that would also feed a lot of the research mm -hmm. um, a colleague of mine dr. Barrow who's the Dean of Education we were looking at and this is going back last year um, but looking at human trafficking mm -hmm. and so we had started out we did some real basic basic groundwork of just just out the door and borrow? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, we, uh, we started off, yeah, and it was great that he was interested in that area of just talking to bus conductors, mm -hmm. asking their perspective on what do they see for. So um, there's a lot of work that needs to be done. We just need anthropologists. We need more anthropologists <laughs> to, yeah. to do this. I wanted to ask, there's a, there's a cultural contrast. Social sciences are about digging deeper and it's a very complex, sophisticated mm -hmm. art. Um, but Belize and Coast society, for the most part, is pretty much, it is what it is. You know, um, the Mennonite community live where they live. You know, we interact the way we interact, and uh -huh. if we don't, we don't. Uh, how as an anthropologist do you, you, do you show the relevance and the importance of dissecting? Because it's, it's a very vulnerable place to be. Very. When you're dissecting yourself and understanding, because not yeah. everything is beautiful when you take it apart and you understand why it works. And it probably might be working for a reason that nobody really took and considered. And it might be working for a reason which is really bad. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. So how do we get yeah. that cultural shift, that work past that cultural contrast? Getting Belizeans to say, listen, there's an importance in us breaking it down. When we break it down, when you put it back together, it's still going to be us. We're just going to understand each other a little bit more. How do we do that? Hmm. That's a really, really good question. <laughs> I think we almost need Amy to come back here to <laughs> talk about that too, because yeah, there's a lot of, um, yeah, like you said, stripping it all down and then recognizing that, yeah, it's not so pretty underneath. Um, but that's a really, that's a good one. Yeah. That's a really tough question. And I think that's, I think because that's, I would see that as being the importance of anthropology, of, of anthropology and, and what we should be doing and what we're capable of doing. Yeah. Um, when I look at some of our graduates yesterday, we, we were just talking about it earlier, we had a, a number of our graduates come back. So we were calling it the Anthropology Alumni Forum. And to come back, and I really wanted them to be able to interact with our current students so our current students could see 
the possibilities, their experiences, um, what jobs they can get. And then to be able to make those contacts and connections and to start this dialogue of mm -hmm. what has the program done, produced, what do we need to do? And so I'm hoping that we can look at what do we do with our program? How do we need to modify it and change it to address the needs now as, as things are shifting and changing over the last 10 years? But it was really great to see what people have been doing. Um, the areas that they're getting into aren't so obvious. But yeah. some of it is saying that, yeah, working in crime in Southside, it's rough, really horrible, the things that are happening. But, you know, you identify the individuals and trying to work with them. Because it's not just sometimes those individuals, it's the outside communities that you need to get yeah. to accept what's let, happening. Let, let me ask your students, what were some of the revelations you've made for yourself in uh, your studies so far? You know, diving into uh, what we call our cultural nuances, why we do what we do, even though we don't try to figure out why. What was some of that self-discovery that you made for yourself in your classes? Well, um, I have found out that a lot of the times we do the things we do is passed down through culture, through our parents. They teach us, and what they teach us, we, we give back. Mm -hmm. So if they teach us to be respectable to our elders, obviously, we're going to carry that around with us mm -hmm. forever. Mm -hmm. And I found out that a lot of the times um, our environment has a big part to deal with who we are because we might learn something at home, mm -hmm. but when we have our friends and our, fam and our other um, individuals influencing us, they sort of impact us as well. They help us to build better relations. They help us to um, understand other people. And they also help us to become whom we are. Hmm. So when we first started, um, well, when I first started studying um, anthropology, um, Ms. Gibbs told us that um, <laughs> we, the first thing that we learn is to not to judge other cultures. Mm. So we have to understand them and um, see the differences and the, the similarities that we have between them. So that when we go to a new place that we don't um, see them as they're wrong, mm -hmm. but what they're doing is right to them. So that is understanding um, them. And then when we first started biological anthropology, um, when we first started studying evolution, she also told us that this is not to like change your faith. So this is not to convert you to, to, um, to an Anything atheist. <laughs> but um, yeah, it's just understanding on how we came to be. And if you yeah. believe in that, well, it just sort of answers some things that it doesn't, that you probably are questioning. Yeah, yeah, so that's it. Sherry, what is it like to have this course in a country like Belize where there's so many different ethnicities, mm -hmm. so many uh, evolving cultures, and also just young in development as well? Yeah, it's actually wonderful. It's been extremely eye-opening for me from when I first came here. Um, I've been living here since 2001, but worked prior and so exposed to a lot of different people. And it was, for me, having to go through these experiences of not judging others, right? So I've sort of learned by experience because of where I came from Canada, um, very sort of secular, and it was a real just it's more rural, homogenous too. Yeah, yeah, community um, to coming here and all of the differences and all of the different people and the different languages. Um, so I learned a tremendous amount and about myself as well. Um, and so I think this is a wonderful place, even th just in the classroom, because we can have, it's like samples of all across Belize in the classroom, so we can have these really rich conversations. Um, sometimes I think I kind of push, you know, what is your culture, what is your background, what are your beliefs, to try to understand and try to get students maybe to be a little bit more interested and to recognize yeah. um, where they're coming from, who their background, you know, yeah. finding more about their ancestry, um, grandparents, and then you find out that there's a whole big mix. So what is it that makes Belizean culture? Yeah. Can um, I ask? We celebrate our diversity. It's, you know, what we use as our tourism motto. Mm -hmm. We talk about mm -hmm. it as Belizeans. But is the extent of our diversity actually leading to our divisiveness? Hmm. 
we've talked about it. We in classes, I know, and I've talked with colleagues about this. Um, I wonder if there's maybe other things at work. Mm -hmm. um, because I've been around where... Take us into your classroom, Sherry. Don't <laughs> mind. <laughs> yeah. We don't mind. You know, we... Sometimes, is it, is it politics? Is it influence from outside? Um, is it religion, even, what we were talking about? And newer religions coming in, right? So when once upon a time it was Catholics and Anglicans, but now we're starting to see a real influx of other um, churches coming in what impact are they having on communities and on cultures and um, cultural activities that maybe in some areas are no longer um, being encouraged and we're starting to see them dying off, the impacts that it has on language. Mm -hmm. So is it because of the diversity that we're starting to see this divisiveness or are we getting impacted maybe by the outside, um, going back again to politics? Right, it, we have these conversations, but trying to identify what is it? Yeah. Um, has it always been like this? And are we just noticing it now? Yeah. Are there certain things that maybe kind of bring it up? I was hoping you'd answer these questions. <laughs> yeah, I don't know, but these are, these are really good questions that we have yeah. to try to um, work it all out. Yeah. Um, you know, how can we, um, for assignments, for papers, you know, yeah. what do we think? But it, it helps us to try to, to really think and to think critically and to, to dig, you know, and to push ourselves a little bit deeper. And especially when we have the students in the classrooms who are coming from these backgrounds, you know, talk to your parents and to find out what made this change. Like we'll talk about the change in family. How have we seen a shift in family? Because we could see family as being the, the deal breaker or the, the ones that's going to mend the issues that we have in society, right? Mm -hmm. um, where did our family problems come from? What started the breakdown in family? Mm -hmm. You know, if we recognize that we do seem to have that. Mm -hmm. And so asking them, go back, ask your grandparents what it was like. But we can even talk about teenage pregnancy because that's nothing new. Yeah. yeah. But now, you know, it's being discussed more and more and it's a problem. Why wasn't it a problem 50 years ago? Mm -hmm. Now, this is a challenge. And I love, you said it clearly and, I, and that's what, keeps on ringing in my mind the fact that we are really educating some young Belizean minds on how to think critically mm -hmm. and um, but there's a challenge anytime you have to go against your own beliefs because we don't know we have them yeah. we, we don't we were talking about intrinsic bias a couple days ago you know we don't know we have them yeah and then when you start asking these questions I'm sure it can be a battle for yourselves or for the wider class, for, uh, you know, just, just being able to tackle whatever's happening in society. And sometimes it really goes against what the church taught you, your mother taught you, what you yeah. saw around you, yes. you know, coming from a uh, household with two parents, coming from a single parent household, uh, being brown, black, or Hispanic. How do you maneuver all of these parts? <laughs> in one conversation. You're smiling, you obviously <laughs> seem to enjoy it. Yes. Well, one of the biggest challenges was when we had an evolution class, mm -hmm. coming from a religious household, having to hear, you know, that sometimes science has facts, whereas the Bible isn't very, it doesn't have as much facts as what they have. But um, I guess one of the ways is you just have to believe in yourself. You have to try and understand different things. Like I said, you may not accept it, but there's no problem in respecting it and understanding different perspectives. Um, like you said, we're a very diverse country. We have um, many diverse people, and they all have different opinions. And we shouldn't be there um, rejecting what they say, but giving them the opportunity to speak their mind and having a good conver conversation. <laughs> yeah, well, for the most part, Belize is very diverse, so there isn't um, a lot of problem with um, not getting along with different cultures and all that. But yes, one of the challenges was um, the evolution, evolution part. <laughs> yeah, where we're yeah, most yeah. people have been to a religious primary school. Yeah, the majority it's not talked have. about. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Can I just ask you one more question? Because you kind of said it 
very early on into the conversation that anthropology can be used to understand the ICJ decision. And uh, we've been talking about it quite a bit, the struggle people are having. Yeah. We talked about the divisiveness that yeah. is now very prevalent. But um, what are your thoughts on uh, uh, why you think, I'm not asking you what, how people yeah. should vote, yeah. but just how you see the campaign unfolding, the fear. Um, yesterday, we had a guest saying that Belizeans are naturally very risk averse. Um, they don't like taking risks, you yeah. know, from an anthropo <laughs> anthropological I've standpoint. Been, yeah, huh, that's a, <laughs> yeah, so I've been watching this, listening a lot, um, and a lot with our students that I keep asking them, even right down to why haven't you registered? Yeah. So my big thing is trying to get the students to register. After that, then, you know, you decide. But been looking at, you know, at first when there was concern about who should be allowed to vote, and should Guatemalans be allowed to vote, right? Who didn't um, give up their Guatemalan citizenship and you know, how long have they been here and should we, you know, are they going to be a problem and want to sort of influence one way or another? Um, those down south, my concern for quite some time was there wasn't really much of a dialogue happening with the people down south and the indigenous communities down south um, who if things don't go the way that, you know, those who say that we should go, if we were to lose, it's going to be those individuals that are going to lose something. So um, I'm starting to see now the discussion and the dialogue and you can sense the fear and the concern. Mm -hmm. um, I think what's interesting to me too is seeing those that have come in, the migrants from our neighboring countries, how very adamant they are about not wanting to lose anything because they know what's at risk and they they have lost so much. So when I talk to students about, you know, understanding, do you know why so many Guatemalans were coming here and why Salvadoranians were coming here in the civil wars and the horrors that they experienced? It's interesting to me that a lot of Belizeans, a lot of young people have no idea that people came here and they lost families and communities, just murdered. Mm -hmm. um, they don't want to go back to that. Um, and so they're really concerned that there, if there's a risk of going to the ICJ and there's a risk that that could happen, they don't want to. Mm -hmm. And so understanding it from that perspective, because there could be that little risk, mm -hmm. and understanding why people are feeling that. Yeah. I, I have a final question split in two. Uh, the first is, I'm curious as to, looking at the, the DNA of police, the cultural DNA of police, from an anthropological standpoint, we must have a twin somewhere out there. <laughs> um, because where we are developmentally, we're very young. Yeah. And if we could locate that huh. anthropological <laughs> twin. Then we can predict know, our future. And that is what science is all about. Science is about predicting if I open you yeah. up here, I'm gonna find a heart here. <laughs> if I pump this in there, this chemical in there, it will give me this reaction. And science, yeah, social science so is really unique. pretty much not. Yeah, I. So, but even. And, and I guess the way you qualify it yeah. is that you adjust it because of the science you're doing. Yeah. And so surely there must be some comparative analysis that we can do in making our assessment of where we are as yeah. a society. That's the first question. The second question I'd like to end off with is where do you see anthropologists contributing to the development of police mm -hmm. ideally? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, that's my big thing right now and that's why I think we really need to get more students coming in because we need anthropologists to help with the development in a variety of different areas um, becoming policymakers so whether it's getting into government whether it's um, with NGOs whether it's starting up your own NGO um, Sylvia who's got her own NGO where you you are working Sylvia, but, uh, Sylvia Batty who's an archaeologist ah. yeah um, maybe recognizing that there are things that you think need to be done and that you know should be done, but maybe wherever your job is, um, it's maybe you're not able to do it through that avenue. So you'll start up your own NGO so that you can funnel and, and get the work done that you, that you think needs. But you don't think we have an anthropological twin? I don't think so. Or cousin, or somebody we can maybe get cousin. cheat codes from. <laughs> you know when I when I because I lived in Newfoundland for a while I went to Memorial University for my undergrad and when I came here to Belize I saw a lot of similarities hmm. um, interesting it's 
small. Lots of different cultures. Coastal, but the and language, the diversity. So even though you know, English, Irish, Scottish, but the languages and where people came from, and you could identify the communities based on how people spoke, um, and certain parts of the island that were kind of cut off. Um, you'd only be able to get to these communities by boat. Um, the west coast of the island was an eight hour drive away from St. John's. And so when people would go to university, they would start them off for the first two years doing sort of, well, before online, but you know, just taking classes on TV, watching TV. Um, now you have Grenfell College. Students will start there and then they go to St. John's, so easing them in. Um, I just saw size-wise, um, but, but a we, lot of similarities. I guess what you're saying, Belize is so unique that it's, yeah, it's going to be is. impossible. Yeah, and, I mean, maybe there are certain aspects and little areas that you could say, oh, this part is kind of similar to another. But no, we're, we're so unique, and, and I think that's the beauty of it. It's challenging because we have to figure out how to, how to do With this. With the song, charter so. own way. Yeah. 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 Interesting. So. World Anthropology Day is actually on Thursday. Tell Thursday. us about the activities that are taking place. Yeah, so um, we're planning some school visits. We've done this in the past. The Anthropology Club goes and does outreach, goes to schools and do different activities. We usually have been targeting um, elementary schools, primary schools, um, but we want to hit some high schools this year, um, in part to kind of show high school students this is an option. You mm -hmm. may have never heard of this before, but you don't want to do business, or maybe you're done with business, you're not really into science, or you've done social studies or general studies. Come to Galen and study anthropology. And if you're uh, naturally inquisitive, too, it'd be a great fit for you. Do you have a particular professional career that you're going after? Uh, yeah, I want to get into forensics. Nice. Right. Forensics. forensics. <laughs> I'm, I'm curious, though. I mean, because when the biology students come, they come with, you know, these, you know, skeletons and whatever, the chemists they come with all these things that make different colors. Yeah. <laughs> What activities do you do to get these teenagers interested to say, yeah, I probably would want to do that? Field work. Field work, <laughs> yeah, so we can do mock excavations and we can tell them about archaeology, that being a really big part. Um, I have a, a plastic skeleton um, that I use for teaching, and so we bring that and have students just put it together. Interesting. Um, you know, and what can we tell from bones? I don't think people realize that our skeletons are unique. and. There's so many different things that we can tell from our skeleton and you know, and why that's important um, and how it can be useful um, for us in forensic anthropology. Um, All right. Yeah. Well, thank you for coming in thank and uh, letting us know what you've been up to. Once again, uh, Galen offers this as an undergrad degree. Yes. Um, so if you have been interested in our conversation, then it's definitely worthwhile to explore. We're going to go ahead now, though, and take a break. And when we come back, we'll be talking to the Belize Men's Basketball National.